Hey folks, John Ferguson Smart here. One of my contacts on LinkedIn asked me a question the other day, and I thought it would be useful to answer here because I think it's a fairly general question. The question was, if you're practicing BDD, if you're doing three Amigo sessions, if you're doing requirements discovery, all of that, if you're using Cucumber and so forth, when do you write the given when then scenarios? It's actually a really good question. Now, there are several places you absolutely should not write given when then scenarios. The first is right at the start of the process when you're recording the, uh, your user story, you're putting it into JIRA, uh, you're, a BA is writing it up or a product owner is writing it up. You don't put given when then scenarios there. That's way too early. Given when then scenarios are the output of a conversation, they are a way of recording a conversation in a clear and concise way. So they don't go right at the start. The other place they absolutely do not go is right at the end. Don't use given when then for test scripts. That's dumb. That just is not a good technique. There are tools out there which allow you to write given when then for REST APIs or for clicks and select. I would really advise against them. They really encourage very, very poor habits in writing this, using this given when then notation. 95% of tutorials on YouTube and, and Udemy and all these places teach Cucumber in a way where you are writing Cucumber test scripts as if you're writing them as test scripting, where you're doing clicks and select. If you see that, if you see Cucumber and Selenium in the same sentence, run away very quickly. They are, they are going to teach you bad habits. So, those are to the two extremes we want to avoid. In between, there's a sweet spot, and it kind of depends on your project and on your team. There are basically two options. You can either sit down together just before you start working on a story during the sprint, and then turn the examples and the business rules that you already had the conversation about earlier on in your three amigos, after your three amigos, this can be after three amigos, or in any case, you sit down just before you start work and then you turn your examples and rules into a given when then format. So just before you start working during the sprint. Now, this works well for a mature team, a team that's been doing BDD a while, who are used to it. It's a more Kanban style approach. For a team that's getting started with BDD or a team with a little bit more structure or needs a little bit more uh, maybe oversight or a little help, for teams like that, another approach is you define the given when then scenarios, you make them a, party, a part of your definition of ready. So for a story to go into a sprint, you need to have written those given when then scenarios before you start, which means that First of all, you have your three amigos, your requirements discovery, which happens maybe the week before a sprint starts or week before sprint planning. And then sometime after that, but before sprint planning, a smaller group of people get together and work through and come up with those given when then scenarios. And then the given when then scenarios, you can use them to ratify your understanding of the requirements in the sprint planning. So if you're doing more formal sprint planning and you really want to know that have you understood the requirements uh, what is the real definition of the requirements then that's a good way of doing things so either will work it kind of depends on your level of maturity and the way your way your team works together so that's what i want to talk about today thanks folks